floor of the Benders uh, Library. Uh, we are the Canvas support team. So everything uh, related to Canvas and uh, all the uh, integrated tools, uh, that's us. So the, if you have any questions, concerns related to Canvas, you can always reach out to us. At the end of the session, uh, uh, Naziha or I will be sharing our contact details. Uh, if you need anything at any point in building your course in Canvas, feel free to contact us. In today's session, we will discuss how to integrate Zoom in Canvas. Uh, I will show you, give you a high level uh, overview and also show you some of the functionalities. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Because uh, this is the Zoom in Canvas uh, session, I will share some screenshots to show what's going on when the Zoom session is actually going on live. Uh, so there'll be a couple of screenshots as well as there'll be some uh, screen sharing where I'll show my Canvas um, dummy uh, course and uh, in the integration. So the first step to create your AU Zoom account is to log into your AU Zoom account and activate it. To do so, you have to go to this URL, which is American.zoom.us. When you do it for the first time, you will come across a screen like this. Uh, can you, uh, can uh, any of uh, you tell me if you can see my screenshot at this point? Because I'm sharing a screenshot. Yes. Is it visible? Yes, we can see Perfect. it. Perfect. Thank you so much. So when you do it for the first time, so when you go to American.zoom.us for the very first time, this is the screen that you'll be com coming across. And when you do it for the first time, you have to go to the third option, which is sign in. You will click on the sign in button and you will uh, have to do is log in with your AU username and AU password. That will take you to your AU Zoom account. When you do it for the first time, it will also trigger uh, an activation mail, which will look pretty much something on these lines, which will say, welcome to Zoom, and it'll have a link. You have to click on that link to activate your account. This is a very, very important step. If you are not doing it, uh, from our end, we can push the activation uh, email multiple times. However, we will not be able to activate it on your behalf. That part you have to do uh, from your end. So make sure if you're doing it for the first time, if you haven't activated your uh, Zoom account yet, make sure you activate it by clicking on the link uh, from the email that you uh, receive. Uh, and the email will pretty much say activate your Zoom account pretty straightforward. Once you have done uh, and your AU Zoom account is activated, you will land somewhere like this. Uh, this is my profile page. Yours will uh, look uh, somewhat similar, of course, uh, with your name, your uh, profile image. The first time you might not have an image, you can upload it by going to this uh, little um, image button and you will see all your details in here. This is the main AU account. If this is not activated, you will not be able to integrate it in your Canvas courses either. So this is step one. Once step one is done, you're Can all you, good. Yeah. Would you allow me a question? Sure. Okay, because uh, I, uh, I mean, I've been teaching using the U, 2U for several years. So I just want to understand a few things so that I don't get confused. The 2U Zoom account is gone. Is that correct? I'm not too sure because I'm not a 2U admin. Uh, that's something which will be directed to a 2U administrator. Uh, but uh, but this is a new account, right? I mean, I'm I'm setting a new a new Zoom account. This is the AU Zoom account, and uh, this is integrated in Canvas as well. I'm not really yes. sure how the 2U uh, uh, Zoom worked, if or if it was different from the AU Zoom at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is the first step in integrating Zoom into Canvas, at least. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So once we are done with step one in activating the AU Zoom account, now we will move on to integrating it in the Canvas course. 
here you can see this is my sandbox course, basically a, a dummy course. Here I already have Zoom integrated in the course navigation menu. However, if you're doing it for the first time, it may happen that you don't see the Zoom uh, option in the course navigation menu. All you need to do is go to settings, And then under settings, you will see the navigation option. In navigation, if you don't see the Zoom option in the course navigation menu, it means that the Zoom option will be somewhere in this down set of um, uh, navigation list. All you need to do is go to these three little dots and click on enable. The moment you do that, the Zoom option will jump straight up in the upper set of list. And let me quickly do a demonstration. So what I did just did was disable my Zoom. And here it is. It's now in the lower set of list. I'll go to the three dots and simply enable it. Now, as you can see, it uh, jumped straight on the top list. And now this is part of my active course navigation menu. After you have enabled it, make sure to save it. If you don't save it, you will not see the change in the navigation menu. Once you have included Zoom in your course navigation menu, you can click on it. You will see a side pop up like this. You can click on this little arrow and your pop up will be gone. And here it is, your Zoom integration is active within your course. Now, please remember that this uh, as Zoom integrated in your Canvas is also connected with your AU's main Zoom account, which we just uh, demonstrated activating in step one. These two are interlinked. If you are not doing the step one first, here you will see an error message. So, which is why I mentioned that it is very, very important to activate your AU Zoom account first and then start the integration part. Once you have done it, it will pretty much show something like this, where you will get a blue schedule a new meeting button and all the other features. Now, this and the main AU Zoom account pretty much works in the same way. One of the biggest um, uh, difference is the one that's integrated in your Canvas course uh, will automatically create all the meetings directly just for your course. However, the meetings that you create in your main AU account, which is American.Zoom.us, is not linked to any one course. It's linked to your overall account. Say you have a talk or um, uh, overall presentation, which is not connected to just one class, but maybe you have a wider audience. Uh, you're inviting participants from multiple uh, sections of yours. You can create it in the main account and share it with your students and other speakers and uh, participants. However, if there is a, a, a meeting that's required specifically just for your class, for example, your class meets online on Zoom, make sure to do it from the Zoom integrated within the course because A, that becomes very easy for you to maintain. You know that, okay, this is the uh, link I have created for my class. And also for your students, it becomes easier because all they need to do is click on the uh, class, come to Zoom and click on the meeting and they can join. So that becomes very simple. You can always create a meeting in your main account and then also integrate it with your uh, class uh, Zoom. That's possible. However, that's one more extra step, of course. Uh, if you want to avoid it, simply come to this Zoom integration within your Canvas uh, course and uh, create a meeting within here. Now I'll pause for a second uh, to see if there is any initial questions. Yep. Hugh, please go ahead. Yes. Can I? Oh, OK. Good morning. Um, I had a quick question. Um, so I will and I just needed a confirmation. So I'm teaching a class 
all online, a synchronous class in the fall, and it meets on Tuesdays and Fridays from four. Mm -hmm. So for that, I would actually have to go into my global navigation menu, select my core, my particular class, then open Zoom, and then within that, I still need to set up the Tuesday, Friday from four or five to six twenty for every week. I need to do. I, I need to manually do that. Is that correct? You can, for that uh, case, you can yeah. do is um, uh, set up a recurring meeting. Yes, with okay. multiple dates and times. Mm -hmm. That way, you don't have to do it for each and every class. You can do the settings one time, and you'll okay. be good to go for the uh, you know rest of the term. Okay, I did see the recurrent meeting setting, and so I just need to go in there to select the particular dates and time one time for the re just select recurrent meeting, and it'll just populate the the fifteen weeks. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, I will, uh, I'll come to it, uh, how to create a recurring meeting. Oh. I'll share those details. All right. Thank you so much. Of course. Of course. Any other questions before I move on? All right. So now let's uh, come to how uh, to schedule a new meeting. To do so, again, you have to click on the actual course, come to Zoom, and here you will find the blue uh, schedule a new meeting button. If you click on that, this interface, and let me quickly um, uh, navigate to the main account. And this is my main AU Zoom account, as you can see, American.zoom.us. If I uh, click on schedule a meeting here, Both of these pretty much look the same in terms of the options they show. However, one difference that you will notice is in the topic area, by default, in the main account, it'll say my meeting. You can always change the name, of course. You can give anything. However, the one within your course will say the course name because, as I said, this one is integrated with your course directly and this one is your overall account and not integrated with just one course it's integrated with your overall account this is one of the differences i wanted to uh, you to show because it might confuse you but this is totally fine this uh the only reason this name is different is because a this is connected with your class and this one is not here under the top Topic. Although it shows by default the course name, again, you can always uh, change it. So you can give a topic name. Description is optional. Here you can uh, give a, a start date of uh, when uh, the meeting is going to occur. You can give the duration. However, uh, the duration doesn't really matters when you start the uh, meeting as a host. You can continue even beyond uh, the set duration. Time zone, uh, it's default to EST. However, if it's occurring in a different time zone, you can always change from this little drop down. Registration, this is not really uh, required much, especially if this is uh, um, a meeting happening for your regular class meetings. It might not be necessary in your case. Security. I always advise to choose at least one security option because we have seen some cases of Zoom bombing in the past, uh, which is why I highly recommend at least having one of the security measures. If you're choosing passcode, make sure you share the passcode with your students. You will always get a system generated default passcode. It's not necessary to have it. You can change it to anything. It can be alphanumeric. It can be anything. But it's important to remember that you have to share the passcode if you're choosing this option. If you're choosing the other option, waiting room, this basically uh, gives you as a host the option to let people in or the participants in when you are ready to start the meeting. I personally prefer the waiting room option because that way I know and I can scrutinize who's coming in and whether I know the participants or not. Going down, uh, video options by default, these are selected to off. However, again, it doesn't really matter. Even if it's turned off, 
as a host, you can always turn on um, the video once you start the meeting. Audio, please keep it to the default settings because some students might use their phones to connect, some might be on their iPads, so they uh, people have different audio settings, so it's good to have it to the default settings here. Under meeting options, you'll find some important uh, additional options. A couple of them uh, might be important. For example, allow screen sharing. If you, uh, this is um, kind of a meeting where students are going to share presentations, you might want uh, to have them to share screen. Breakout rooms, you can uh, pre-determine the breakout rooms at this stage when you are setting up a meeting or you can do it while the meeting is going on, during the meeting. And I'll show you how that option looks just in a bit. You can use your personal meeting ID or you can create a unique meeting ID, which, uh, for example, if I don't enable this, this uh, particular meeting will create its own meeting ID. And then the final option is record the meeting automatically. I personally don't like this because I like uh, to choose the record to cloud option after starting the meeting when I think I'm ready to record the meeting. Because when you start a meeting, you have a little bit of introductions. Sometimes we have ice breaking sessions and all of that. You might not need to record those parts, which is why I don't uh, like to enable this option at this stage. I like to do it after I'm, uh, I think I'm ready to start recording. Now, going back to the recurring meeting options. So under the time zone, under the duration part, you will get the recurring meeting options. As we just had a question that if you have multiple occurrings throughout the term, you might find this very, very handy. If you enable this option, you will see it gives you a couple more additional options to select from. One is recurrence, how often your meeting occurs. Uh, from the drop down, you can choose multiple different options. If you choose weekly, you will see it gives you the different dates. So say my um, meeting occurs once every week and occurs on Wednesdays and Fridays. I can select these days and then I'll give a, a, an end date. So maybe my end date is, let's go to, oops, sorry. I'm going too far. Maybe I'll give 11 and then 30th. And uh, if I choose a date, I'll not be able to choose this, but if you know that it's going to uh, stop after a couple of occurrence, you can choose that number from here. But I personally prefer uh, giving a date. Once you have given that, once you have selected uh, the date and the time, and let's go down. You can give alternate host uh, IDs here. So for example, if you have alternate host uh, who is also an AU um, uh, TA or AU user, you can give their details here. You can simply type their uh, username and the uh, person will appear here. Once you have given all of that, click on save. And here it is, my meeting for the class has been created. Now, let me go back to Zoom. And since this is a recurring meeting, you will see uh, it has automatically created a bunch of different occurrings for the specific dates that I wanted it to be. So now I don't need to go in multiple times and create meetings for each date. I have it ready for all the dates that's coming up. Now, all you need to do is tell your students to log into Canvas, come to the course, come to Zoom, and instead of start and delete, on their end, they will see the join button. They will click on the join button and uh, they will join the a meeting. Any questions so far? Yes, Nandini. Um, I had a quick question. So. Uh, on the screen, what I'm seeing is, you know, the, each of these is called test uh, zero one. And so mm -hmm. weekly, we want to change uh, the title of the session, right? Week one, um, week one or week two, whatever it is. Um, it, what's the best way to do that? 
for a recurring meeting, that's not possible because you are basically doing one meeting and setting different dates. Test one is just a random name I give. Uh, in most cases, the best practice that I have seen is instead of giving week one, week two names, it's uh, uh, instructors prefer to give something like weekly meetings and the name of the course. And that way, because you already have the dates mentioned, and as you go on, the recurring meetings will also start, uh, you know, disappearing the previous ones. So students know that, okay, uh, which one is the upcoming one on which one is uh, the one that they need to join, they will be automatically able to see that. So there is no such way to give different name in case of recurring meetings. However, if you're setting up different meetings, you can totally do that. So if I may follow up uh, with another question, if I'm teaching two sections, will, mm -hmm. will this populate separately in each of the section Canvas courses or will I see this all at the same time for the two sections under Zoom? No. Yeah, so this one, which I just did, for example, I did it for my sandbox course. So this is integrated with just my sandbox course and not any other course. If I have to create a meeting for another course, I will do the same thing. I'll click on that particular course, go to Zoom and create a set of meetings for that course. And that can have totally different set of names. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, let me go back and show you how it looks on the main account part. So as I said, that both of these, although they are connected, the main account meetings will not appear for your class Zoom. However, it's, uh, for, it's not the same thing other way, meaning whatever you create within your class Zoom integration will automatically appear under your main account because these two are integrated. You don't need to be bothered. I'm just letting you know as a FYI because you might think that, oh my God, why is it appearing under my main account? It doesn't matter because these two are integrated. That's the reason it's, uh, it is appearing here. However, if you see, let me go to one of my mm, other meetings. So, for example, this one, Canvas Discussion. This is a meeting I have set up under my main account, not integrated with my Sandbox course. So, Canvas Discussion, this meeting, you will not find in my Sandbox. However, if I want, I can integrate this with my class meeting as well. All I need to do is copy this meeting ID, go to my class canvas and I'll go to these three little dots, click on import meeting and paste the ID here and click on import. Now it appears under this section. I can also uh, uh, choose to deselect this or uh, deintegrate this. I'll do the same by going to the three dots and go to this uh, disassociate meeting. Again, give the same meeting ID and disassociate it. Now, remember, if you choose delete, then it will delete the meeting. It will not disassociate. Disassociating means it will disassociate from just this course. However, it still stays here. If you have chosen delete, it would have deleted from here as well. Does this make sense? Yes, Nandini. I'm sorry for asking so many questions. So when I'm teaching two sections and I have one common office hours, um, how do mm -hmm. I go about doing that? When you say uh, common office hours, do you mean- For both sections, to... for both sections. Okay, do you mean you want to use the same uh, meeting ID for both? Correct, correct. Yeah, you can totally do that. So uh, Zoom account gives you a personal meeting ID and you can find it under profile. So this is my profile and this is my okay. personal meeting ID. This so remains your common. recommendation is to use uh, the profile account, right? The personal for meeting all, room? 
yeah, for office hours, you can totally use that because you're, uh, you're uh, saying that it will remain common for both the sections. You can totally use your personal meeting room account uh, for office hours specifically. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions before I move on? I know it's a lot, so feel free to ask me as many questions as you want. All right. Okay, so I'll show you one quick, uh, I'll say a tip. I know uh, for many classes, you might need breakout rooms. As I told you before, that you can create the breakout room at this stage when um, creating a meeting, or you can do it while the meeting is go going on. Now, let me share a screenshot, which will show you how your screen as a host will look like. Uh, I hope you guys can see my screenshot at this point, right? I'll take it as a yes. yes. Okay. Yes, we, okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a screenshot I took while uh, doing a meeting. Uh, and if you see as a host, you will see a bunch of different options here. You will see share screen, record, live transcript, all of that. Right before or beside live transcript, you will have breakout room. If you click on that, let me see. Uh, 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 yeah. If you click on that, you will get the breakout room option and it will create a new window which will tell you how many breakout rooms you're trying to create. You can have multiple and then you can either assign automatically or you can assign manually, meaning you can choose which uh, student you want to put in which breakout room. At this point, you can also name your breakout rooms. Instead of, you know, having breakout room one, two, so on and so forth, you can have multiple different names. Now, all of these functions can be done both during the meeting as well as, as I said, while setting up. Some uh, instructors prefer doing it ahead of time beforehand uh, so that there is not much confusion happening during the meeting and it's absolutely fine. If you are doing it at the uh, point while setting up your meeting, you need to enable this option. And then you have a couple of different choices from here. If you go to the plus create room option, it gives you pretty much the same thing. So it tells you to create the room by giving you a plus a sign. If you click on that, it gives you the breakout rooms uh, and how to add participants. Now, if you click on the breakout room one, it, this is a default name, but you can totally change it. You can change it to whatever name you want. And for participants, right now, my class doesn't have uh, much of the participants, but let me see if I can add one of my colleagues. Okay, yeah. So uh, when you have an actual live class and you have ton of different uh, participants, all you need to do is just type their email ID and you can assign students in different breakout rooms. If you click on the plus button, you can go on and create as many breakout rooms as you want. And uh, this way, once you're done, if you click on save, you don't have to worry about creating it while the meeting is going on, your breakout rooms are set. Once uh, you can also do it by doing an import from CSV. Now, if you click on that, it gives you a template to download. This template basically tells you to give room name and the student email IDs. Same thing as we just did, but just in the form of a CSV file, that's it. Once you're done, uh, save the CSV file and simply upload it here. It'll do the same exact thing. It's just two different ways of doing it. Any questions so far? Yes, please. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we save the uh, create the room distribution, or is this set up only for uh, per session? For, you can save the CSV file yeah, for your I, class. I, I saw that. Yes, I, I agree with you. But I was asking about the create rooms, uh, the create rooms 
option? Uh, uh, can we save it here or we have to do it on a CSV? Uh, so the CSV file is a savable file, uh, but when you are doing it for uh, with the first option, which is create room, that remains only with uh, that particular meeting. Now, if you're doing it as a recurring meeting, then it applies to all the meetings. So if you want to save something, I will say go for a CSV file for the first time, save the file, and that's it. You're done for the rest of your uh, semester. It stays in your computer, and every time you come, you have to create a new meeting. Simply upload it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? All right. Now that we are uh, we have discussed how to create a meeting. I will show you how you can add the meeting link uh, to um, set up uh, schedule office hours or set up appointments or things like that. Let me quickly take one of the meeting IDs. So for example, I'll just take the first one and for demonstration purposes. So let's say this is my personal room uh, ID or just a, a random meeting that I have set up to create office hours. Uh, uh, now to set up the office hours, what I'll do is I'll go to calendar. And here I am. Uh, let me take a future date. Let's say September 12th, I am planning to set up some office hours for September 12th. I'll click on the date, go to appointment group. Here I'll name it as office hour, location, Zoom. In the details section, I'll paste the Zoom link. And now, maybe I want to create uh, not one, but multiple officers because I have, of course, multiple students. So I will give a time range. Say I'll give from 10 a.m. till maybe 3 p.m. And I want to divide this entire time into 30-minute slot for each of my student. I'll do it, and this is default, but of, of course you can choose more or less totally depending on your uh, requirements. Once you have selected that, simply click on go, and it'll create multiple different office hours, each of 30 minutes range. Once you have done that, you can limit each time slot to one student. By default, obviously it takes one, but you can increase it. You may or may not enable this option, which says allow students to see who has signed up. It might not be necessary, so you can keep it disabled. And you can limit participants to attend just one appointment. Once you have done this, you will want to select which section you are doing it for. Uh, you, uh, you can click on select calendar, and under this, you will see all the uh, sections that you are teaching. Right now, I really don't have any section because I'm not an instructor, but I'll, uh, for demonstration, I'll choose my sandbox course. I'll click on done. So now I have a set of office hours with my Zoom link here set for um, my particular course, which is my sandbox course. And each uh, office hour is meant for just one student. So I'm all set. I'm ready to publish it. Now, once I publish it, you will see all the 30 minutes office hours set here. On the student's end, what they will see is all the available office hours. They will click on each office hour, sign up for the, uh, for the one they want, and that will be grayed out for the other students. On your end, you will see by clicking on it, just by bringing your cursor on top of that, who has signed up for which office hour. Any questions so far?
All right. Another quick thing I want to uh, highlight. Let me go back to my course. Once you have set up some Zoom meetings for your class, uh, they can be your uh, weekly Zoom uh, sessions, the regular sessions with your students. Once you have set those up, if you click on show course summary in the syllabus area, it will also show your Zoom meetings set for each week. Now, show course summary, basically what it does is it takes all the important due dates. It can be assignment due dates. It can be a quiz due date. It can also be some of the Zoom uh, uh, session due dates or dates, and it will show it under the course summary. What it does is it basically tells your students that, okay, these things are due on this date. You have scheduled meeting on, uh, X date and so on and so forth. It basically summarizes your course in terms of the important due dates. You can totally choose not to enable this by not, of course, clicking the uh, little uh, box. However, if you do, it will appear under the course summary. Now, once you have started a Zoom meeting, the next thing uh, that you might need um, very importantly is recording a session. That's something comes up in our discussions very often. Like, how do I record? Where do I get the recordings? I always, always recommend choose the record to cloud option. Now, let me quickly share a screenshot for that as well. Mm, let's see if I have one. Okay, I don't have a screenshot for that. However, when you start the meeting as a host, basically you will uh, see your record option right here. If you click on that, you get two recording options, record uh, on cloud, record on computer. If you choose record on computer, it'll basically record a copy on your computer. It's uh, like it, in the hard location of your computer. However, if you choose the other option, record on cloud, that's highly, highly recommended for multiple reasons. A, of course, it doesn't take up the space in your computer. It uh, basically saves in a cloud location. And B, and very importantly, it saves in two places. One, of course, uh, it saves in Zoom. And two, it saves in Kaltura, which is my media in Canvas. Uh, now, Zoom cloud recordings have an expiration date of 30 days. They automatically expire after 30 days. However, the recordings that get saved in Kaltura, they remain forever. They don't have an expiration date. If you want to access these recordings, maybe after five years, 10 years down the line, you will still have them in your AU's Kaltura account. Now, let me show you how they actually look like. So as I said, Kaltura in Canvas uh, is um, known by My Media. Now, if you go to My Media, this is your exclusive Kaltura account. Students can't see this. They don't have access to this one. This, this will be exclusively for your view, for your uh, videos and uploads. Now, if you see, I did a test recording this morning right before our meeting, and it says Zoom recording ID with the date on it. If you see, there is a difference between this uh, video and this video. This doesn't have the Zoom recording ID because I uh, recorded it using Kaltura itself. However, this one was a cloud recording of Zoom, which got stored in my media. Now, as I said, the one stored in Zoom will expire. However, this right here will never expire, which means you can access this anytime at any, um, you know, at any future point. If you go to Zoom, you will also find these cloud recordings. So if you um, want a recent recording, like the one I just did this morning, I can find them under cloud recording section. 
So this is the one I did this morning. So if you click on that, you can see multiple files. Now, Zoom does this. Basically, what it does is it uh, records a video in multiple different formats. So the first one carries everything, audio, video, if it has closed captions, uh, all of it. This one is just audio. If it had closed caption, there will be another file for the closed caption. So if you want to share a, a video, you will want to share the first one, which carries all of the content. Yes, Nandini. So uh, this will not automatically be available to students after class, right? It has to be shared. How, how does that work? Uh, so if it's in the cloud area of Zoom, it will automatically be available because students can come to Zoom, they can click on the cloud recording section, they can see this. The Kaltura one, the one that I just showed under my media, that remains in private mode at first. That's the default mode. And mm -hmm. as I said, my media is exclusively your access point. Students can't see it. So as you can see, it's tagged private. If I choose to share it, that's when it becomes available for you, uh, for students. Okay, so I have to, so if students at the end of the term, for example, want to go back 10 weeks to see what I said in week one, mm -hmm. they would need to have access to that. Absolutely. And this is something that I, I have to take that extra step and make that available to them. Yeah, and that extra step is super simple. All you need to do is, publish this course uh, to Media Gallery because Media Gallery is that shared point where you and the students will have access. So if you want to publish this one, all you need to do is check this uh, video, go to action, publish. By default, obviously, as I said, it's set to private. You can change it to publish and select the course where you're trying to publish it. So for me right now, it's the sandbox. I'll choose that course and click save. Now, if you go to media gallery, here it is. So if, for example, students are trying to access a recording which is past 30 days, this is what you need to share. If it's within those 30 days of the recording, they can simply go to Zoom, go to the cloud recordings and access it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason, uh, I'll just go back a couple steps. This is the reason uh, I say that I highly, highly recommend choosing the record to cloud option because this you will get this advantage with the cloud option. However, if you choose record to computer, you're not going to get this option. You have to take a couple of extra steps in uploading that video and um, that might be a little mess considering uh, how much space it's taking in your computer, how big the recording is, and all of that. So you can avoid all of that by selecting a record to cloud option. Any questions so far? All right. Now I'm pretty much in the last leg of our uh, session today, which is how to edit a cloud recording. Now it might happen that there are some parts in your recording which you don't want to share with students or is simply redundant. Uh, there was some ice breakings, introductions, or at the end, there's some extra additional information which is not really necessary. You want to edit them. Now you can do it in two different ways. As I said, cloud recordings get stored in two places, right? So one is Zoom, one is uh, My Media, Kaltura. So you can edit your video in both these places. However, the editing options that's available to you is a bit different. The ones that's available under Zoom is very, very basic. They just uh, let you trim the top and tail and that's it. You get a little more option in My Media, Kaltura. So you can trim uh, places in between. You can, um, you know, uh, select places which you don't want to add and all of that. And I'll quickly show you uh, that editing 
part a little bit, but we can totally go over it if you know, need additional support with that when, when you are at that point, of course. So let me show the Zoom editing option first. For that, I'll go to Zoom. I'll go to cloud recording. Let me take the first one. Since this is the one that has everything, all the elements, I'll go to this. When I click on the video, it'll open in a new window. Once it opens in the new window, you will see a little scissor button. It's the trim button. If you click on that, it gives you a timeline. Basically, the timeline gets highlighted and you can simply trim from the top and the tail. Obviously, you can preview and see which parts you don't uh, you need or not, and you can simply trim that part. And that's it. These, these are the only options available with a Zoom cloud recording edit option. Very simple, pretty uh, straightforward. However, let me go to my media. I'll click on the title of the video. I'll go to action and go to launch editor. Now in this um, uh, little uh, window, you will see this, there's a bunch of different things going on. Here you can see your uh, uh, video title and when it was created, this is the preview window. You can uh, play and pause from here. And this is your uh, timeline. As I said, Kaltura gives you a little extra options and you will see those options in here. So beside trimming from the top and the tail, say I'll I'll need from here, suppose. Then maybe I, I don't need some part in between. So I will uh, clip here. Or actually, let me go back. Let me show you something else as well. I'll split here. And then I'll come to another uh, starting point. Maybe this is this uh, middle part, middle little uh, clip is something I don't need. Here I'll split again and I can simply delete this. Now don't worry about joining this, uh, this uh, empty portions because when you save, it will automatically join them. And you can do this multiple different times within your timeline. Now, once you have done that, you can either save or you can save a copy. I personally recommend saving a copy because that way you have the original as well as you have the edited copy. You can always share the copy instead of the original because that's the edited one. Once you uh, click on save a copy, it automatically takes the name clip off and then the original meeting title. You can totally change this up to you and click on create. Takes a little time. Once it's done, it also appears under my media. Here it is. So you have the test meeting. You also have the clip of test meeting. Now, this is the one that you would like to uh, share with your students. As I showed before, all you need to do is publish it by selecting it, going to action, publish, and selecting the section where you want to publish it. And once it's done, it goes to media gallery. And here it is. Any questions so far? All right. 
you can also embed these Zoom recordings, those uh, that's uh, stored in my media in your course content. Say, for example, this is a recording is part of an assignment that that's coming up. All you need to do is click on the uh, title of the video. You will get share option. From here, you can always choose the player size uh, based on your needs. I always choose the highest one. You can select that and copy the embed code. Then go to assignments. I'll create a new assignment just to demonstrate. And if this is part of an assignment, I can come to the text editor box and embed it in a couple different ways. I can either come to the embed section directly and embed from here. As you can see, I have all the different options that I saved. So I have the clip, I have the entire video. Uh, obviously, if it, uh, the edited version is there, I'll want to uh, embed the edited version. So I can simply click on embed and it will become part of this. However, I'll show you why I copied the embed code. The second one, this little plug option does the exact same thing. The first time when you do it, you will not get the embed Kaltura media option here. You will just get view all. Click on that and you'll get the embed Kaltura video here. And it does the exact same drill and the same window will ap appear right here. So embed it and it's part of your assignment. And here goes the third option for which I copied the embed code. So this little cloud icon is basically where you will come and paste the embed code. Once you do it, it does the exact same thing, but just uh, the way of doing it is different. Here you are directly embedding it. Here use, you you uh, using the embed code. Once you have done it, you can add your assignment details, add all the other details, and save your assignment. So that's how you can also make a Zoom recording part of an assignment or quiz or a page. Now remember. Uh, this rich text editor box and all the functionalities that you see right here are exact same, be it for a, uh, an assignment, be it for a, a quiz or a page. So they remain the same. So you will get all the embed options everywhere you find this rich text editor box. Any questions so far? All right, so that's all I have from my side. Um, if any support is needed, which is very specific to your course, we are always here to help. You can always contact us. I can share the contact details in the chat. I just shared the email ID. and the phone number as well. You can call us, send us an email, and we will be happy to schedule a, an one 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 with you and go over the different options that you might need for your course exclusively. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask me now or later. Thank you, Nandini.